Nearly one out of four EU citizens is poor or at risk of poverty. We have still 119 million people at risk of poverty or social exclusion, and this is unacceptable. Three groups are primarily affected. Poor children, currently 25 million. The most fundamental thing is that every child should have a hot meal. And while some of us take it for granted, that is not the case. Unemployed or uneducated adolescents and young adults, one out of six. Ci sono soltanto lavori a orari improponibili, sottopagati e comunque per gente che un giorno ci sei, un giorno non ci sei. Working poor, those who work yet don't earn enough. Contratos a termo, digamos assim, são mais elevados ao nível da percentagem da, da população empregada. Somos o país que tem também das taxas mais altas de part-time involuntário e de uh, trabalho uh, temporário, de trabalho a termo, também involuntário. In 2010, the European Union set combating poverty and social exclusion as a central aim of its ambitious Europe 2020 strategy. Our general mission is growth, jobs, social fairness, and democratic change. The objective, reduce the number of poor people by 20 million by 2020. Is that achievable? If it isn't, what are the consequences for poor people? For Europe? The EU provides a clear definition of poverty. Anyone earning less than 60% of the national average is considered at risk of poverty. How can it be that one in four EU citizens is poor? Are EU policies inadequate? Are the national states at fault? Or is the financial crisis to blame? Armut is the result in my eyes, from very, very many factors. And there has the crisis then certainly been a part, because in a crisis, in a crisis, the other problems are much more In order to understand, we decided to talk to concerned citizens and politicians in Portugal, Ireland, Italy, and Brussels. Ireland was hit very hardly by the crisis, uh, with the, the house bubble, let me say. Uh, Portugal was also very hardly hit and was also under an assistance program. And uh, Italy has, uh, since a long time, we can see that there are structural problems in Italy and they also have huge unemployment, uh, specifically for young people. It is disheartening. So we wonder, what does the battle against poverty look like in Europe? Is there any way it can be fought consistently? Die EU äh, spricht von der äh, Europa 2020 äh, Strategie, die sprechen von der Lissabon Strategie, aber wovon sie weniger gerne sprechen ist das, was etwa die Troika äh, und die äh, Europäische Zentralbank in äh, den südwesteuropäischen Ländern, also zum Beispiel Italien und äh, Italien, Spanien, Portugal angerichtet haben. Die haben da genau das Gegenteil dessen gemacht, was sie äh, offiziell verlautbaren. Italy, one of the EU states most severely affected by the recent financial and economic crisis. Unemployment rose sharply in the past few years. Most recently it was at 11%. Even those who have a steady job are often barely able to make ends meet. And the number of people living in poverty, or at risk of poverty, has been rising for years. In 2015, it was 17 and a half million. One in four Italians. Ci sono i cosiddetti nuovi poveri. Una cosa che la crisi ha evidenziato è che quella che una volta si chiamava classe media ha vissuto una, una sorta, diciamo, ha, le risorse che aveva a disposizione sono molto diminuite. Quindi, ehm, sa, un conto è essere, come potrei dire, essere poveri e rimanere poveri. 
Un conto è essere non poveri e diventare poveri. Questo è un elemento che è poco sottolineato nelle dinamiche di cambiamento di una società. Italy has one of the highest rates of young people living at risk of poverty because they have difficulties finding jobs and apprenticeships. The young generation in the South is particularly affected. In Sicily, the youth unemployment rate exceeds 57%, which makes the statement Italian Labor Minister Giuliano Poletti made at a press conference in winter of 2016 even more perplexing. Io conosco gente che è andata via e che è bene che stia dove è andata, perché sicuramente questo paese non soffrirà moltissimo a non averli più tra i piedi. Das ist natürlich der ganz billige Weg, einfach zu sagen, haut ab, dann habe ich das Problem nicht mehr. So geht's auch nicht. Natürlich ist Auswandern eine mögliche Alternative, aber für einen Politiker ein bisschen arg billig. A day later, Poletti apologized. He had been quoted out of context, thus distorting what he had said. He had intended to praise those who stay, as he explains. Chi parte non è di per sé migliore di chi rimane. Eh, quindi dire che eh, chi parte sono i migliori non mi pare un modo giusto di affrontare il tema. Instead of observing this subject from a distance, we meet a job seeking young Sicilian. He still lives with his parents. Tancredi graduated high school two years ago and has been unemployed since. His mother is the only one in the family with the job. His father, a social worker, has been unemployed for two years. His sister is also unemployed. And one year ago, she became a mother. È veramente una brutta, un brutto momento. Mi sento una che sta attraversando una fase storica molto particolare in cui si sta vivendo un cambiamento che non è solo legato al lavoro. È un cambiamento, secondo me, proprio di, di modo di vedere la vita. È un cambiamento più, più, più interiore dell'essere umano, soprattutto in Italia, da noi. E quindi questo cambiamento sta incidendo moltissimo poi su tutto quello che c'è intorno. The Eufrates belong to Italy's middle class, which comprises three quarters of the population. They have seen their standard of living diminish considerably because of falling wages and rising costs of living. Abbiamo un livello della tassazione, quindi un peso fiscale sul lavoro e un peso dei contributi previdenziali per la pensione che è più alto della media europea. Quindi questo produce l'esito che le imprese pagano di più e i lavoratori incassano di meno. Tancredi and his family reflect the Italian labor market. On the one side, older, mostly public sector employees who, like his mother, are protected from layoffs. And on the other side, young people like him and his sister, who simply can't find any work at all. Tutti gli uffici pubblici, alcuni privati, hanno una media adesso diventata media 50 anni. Ci siamo tutti stanchissimi, distrutti e reggiamo tutti gli uffici. La gente lavora, quella che ancora c'è il posto e sta lavorando come sono io, lavoriamo per altre dieci persone. Io sto lavorando oggi, che ho 57 anni, più di quando ne avevo 34. Even though, on average, young Italians are more educated than their parents, youth unemployment reached almost 38% in 2016 which makes it seem hopeless for one in three graduates. There are ideas of what has to change. Intanto cominciando a rendere un po' più flessibile la possibilità di uscita per pensionamento delle persone in modo tale che ci sia più turnover di quello che fino ad ora è stato possibile, migliorando l'accompagnamento al lavoro dei giovani, perché abbiamo un problema anche qui di mismatch, di distanza tra ciò che chiede l'impresa e ciò che esce come formazione dalla scuola, quindi il sistema formativo e il sistema delle competenze. Italy still has a long way to go. Unlike Germany, for instance, it has no consistent training system with apprenticeships, vocational schools and craftsmen's diplomas. So ein System wie die duale Ausbildung ist nicht einfach durch politischen Beschluss zu übertragen. Das läuft bei uns ja auch, weil das, das ist ja über eine lange Zeit entstanden. Das läuft bei uns deshalb, 
weil wir die Meister schon haben, die Lehrlinge, Lehrlingen was beibringen können, weil wir die Berufsschulen schon haben, in denen die über den Betrieb hinaus was lernen können, weil es die Kammer gibt, die auf, darauf achten, dass bestimmte Standards in der Ausbildung eingehalten werden. Und so ein Ding erstmal ans Laufen zu bringen, ist ein Riesenkraftakt. In Italy, occupational expertise is often handed down within families, which makes it even harder for Tancredi. His mother works at the Department of Justice, so there's no family business to join. Chiaramente l'economia è quella che è, e siamo ridotti in questa maniera, chiaramente i ragazzi non, il fatto che non vedano prospettiva a me fa stare molto male, perché io ricordo, ripeto, di non essere stata neanche un giorno senza un'occupazione. The EU is targeting youth unemployment. In 2013, all member states committed to the Youth Guarantee. The program is meant to ensure that every EU citizen under the age of 25 finds a job, an apprenticeship, or an internship within four months of graduation or becoming unemployed. The European Social Fund allocated 8.4 billion euros to facilitate the structural reforms required by the program. In Italy, practical implementation has proved especially complicated. They had a huge youth unemployment, but they did not even know who the young people are, where they are. And if you don't know them, if you don't find them, if, they, if you have so many needs, as we call them, people not in employment, in education or in training, and they are not registered in an, in an uh, employment service, how can you guide them? How can you support them? How can you offer them services to uh, attract them in the labor market? So first thing you have to do is to make, uh, to, to make it happen that you have services available, well-functioning labor market services, and that they reach young people. The Centro per l'Impiego in Italia, historically, has been more a sort of anagrafe of the disoccupation than an office that helps in the research of work. Quindi oggi per noi questo è il passaggio. Vuol dire che abbiamo cominciato a fare le politiche attive che non facevamo. In 2014, Italy launched Garanzia Giovani, an Italian program that is partially financed by EU funds. It is supposed to motivate young unemployed people under 29 to register with the employment office and help them find a job, an apprenticeship, or at least an internship position. Internships are paid 500 euros per month and last half a year. If a firm employs an intern, it will receive a bonus. If they go so far as to hire a young person, they even get a four-figure tax reduction. Tancredi took part in Garanzia Giovani in the fall of 2015 and did an internship in a pet shop. Però per problematiche economiche e familiari, diciamo che ho preferito non aggravare la situazione sui miei genitori. Infatti quasi subito ho cercato di trovare un lavoro. Soprattutto dal punto di vista psicologico era la cosa più stressante era quella che riguardava quella specie di incertezza e di assunzione o di non assunzione. Jugendarbeitslosigkeit ist die schlimmste Arbeitslosigkeit, weil wenn sie jungen Menschen dadurch sagen, wir brauchen euch nicht dann zertrümmert das mehr als nur eine Existenz. It is especially in the first years of employment that young people learn the skills they will use throughout their lives to tackle the daily routine. Mi ero abituato a quel tipo di ritmo di vita, alzarmi la mattina, andare al lavoro, poi tornare a pranzo e ritornare al lavoro e poi ritornare a casa la sera. Diciamo che mi aveva un pochettino scombussolato il fatto di non fare più questi. A year later, he is still unemployed. He only got his last paycheck nine months after the internship had ended. Was he the only one? We look for other participants in the program, and our search pays off on YouTube. The young man talks about his experience. Più che lavoratori eravamo degli zerbini. Dopo l'esperienza lavorativa, non siamo stati presi. Abbiamo lavorato per nulla. A rapportarci con dipendenti. And just like Tancredi, he did not get paid right away. Io il primo stipendio l'ho ricevuto dopo due mesi che avevo concluso garanzia giovani. Quindi ho lavorato circa sei mesi a gratis. Dopo sono arrivati i soldi, per carità, ma con un ritardo vergognoso. 
Why weren't the young people paid on time? We asked the city councilor in charge of work, family, and social policy. His answer is startling. Gli enti che non consegnavano i, i, i documenti ma li consegnavano dopo settimana dopo mesi. Eh, alcune volte nel frattempo poi le risorse venivano utilizzate per pagare gli altri e nel frattempo veniva difficile eh, fare le riprogrammazioni delle risorse perché nel bilancio durante l'anno eh, ci sono gli assestamenti e quindi si allungavano i tempi. Nel frattempo finivano le risorse e aspettavamo che arrivassero le risorse europee. Quindi abbiamo avuto noi alla fine. Eh, eh, dei 47.000 giovani, 11.000 non pagati in regola. EU funds that were provided specifically for the young people's salaries were spent otherwise and were then used up. Is this embezzlement or simply negligent budgetary management? The Italian Minister of Labour washes his hands of it. Perché qui c'è un passaggio delle regioni eh, che hanno regolato, regolamentato questa materia in forme diverse. The EU ties its payments to specific conditions, but were they met in Italy? We want that the budget is spent on a result, in a result-oriented way. It's not just you use the money therefore, so it's fine, it's used for the right thing. No, no, we want to see results, we want uh, indicators, it must be measured. Uh, it is taxpayers' money, so it must, and it is a lot of money. Member states have to submit a report on their efforts to the EU twice a year. If the EU is displeased with the results, it can request changes. Did Garancia Giovani utterly fail in Sicily? We, at least, were not able to come across a single young person in the province of Caltanissetta who found a job. Those we did meet were angry e che al governo attuale, come ai futuri o ai passati governi, questo servirà per fare crescere no? eh, all'interno delle statistiche no? il dato relativo all'occupazione. Cioè si potrà dire che queste migliaia di giovani, tra cui Tancredi, hanno contribuito a far diminuire la disoccupazione giovanile. Sicily ha il più alto numero di giovani che partecipano in Garanzia Giovani. Yet it is here that the program appeared to be least successful, because there simply are no jobs. Can a program that focuses solely on youth unemployment be the solution? Das ist nicht nachhaltig. Wenn ich es nachhaltig haben will, dann brauche ich die Veränderung in der Wirtschaft insgesamt. What sorts of changes would be necessary? Why are there no jobs in Italy? Why is the Italian economy one of the weakest in the whole EU? Italien ist eigentlich zwei Länder. Einerseits ein hochentwickeltes Industrieland und andererseits ein Entwicklung, fast Entwicklungsland. Und noch dazu ein, ein mit vielen Problemen behaftetes Entwicklungsland. Der Süden hat halt eben korrupte Verwaltung, Mafia, da versickert das Geld irgendwo. Auch, auch manchmal scheint mir eine Lebenshaltung, die so ein bisschen gleichgültiger ist. Jobs don't get created just like that especially in places with deficient infrastructure. This highway is emblematic of Sicily. We have a road ferroviary that is practically inexistent, a road autostradal that is deficit and is poco. So, troppo poco si fa da questo punto di vista, troppo poco si è fatto negli anni. E questo è un, è preoccupa. Preoccupa perché oggi l'Europa con la programmazione 14-20 è ormai andata oltre, ormai è, è incentrata sulla ricerca, sull'innovazione, sul supporto alle imprese, sul favorire l'accesso al credito. Most young people live in rural areas. But despite low interest rates, not much was done to create jobs. Now the city council even goes so far as to blame the young people for their frustration. Lavoro ce n'è e ce n'è tanto. Immagino i lavori eh, nella, nella, nella campagna, nell'agricoltura, anche là. Eh, quindi abbiamo dei pezzi del mercato del lavoro che tradizionalmente in Sicilia occupavano migliaia e migliaia di, eh, di, 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 di soggetti anche in età eh, giovanile che si sono trasportati. Questo, questo, questo pezzo del mondo del lavoro che era occupato da siciliani, prevalentemente giovani, adesso invece si è, è occupato da, da, non, da non siciliani. E, 
le nuove generazioni di giovani siciliani non guardano più a questo pezzo del mondo del lavoro e quindi ovviamente eh, eh, essendo l'altro pezzo del mondo del lavoro, quello ultra specializzato, quello impiegatizio, il terziario, i servizi. Insistently, working in agriculture often means working in the family business. And most young people don't even get a real salary, which leaves them without any prospects. Without work, many have no other option than to leave. Already decades ago, thousands of Italians had to flee their country to escape from hopelessness. The situation is daunting. Two-thirds of young people under 34 still live with their parents, most of them because they can't even afford to rent a room in a shared apartment. Many get financial support from their families. Tancredi doesn't even believe politicians will be able to bring change. So he sticks up for himself now and tries to encourage others to do the same. When I finished to make guarantees for young people, when I felt that I had lost faith in the system, I was working with the other adherents to the front to make banquets, e a, comunque a gridare a gran voce quello che era la verità, quello che erano in realtà le bugie, le false promesse che erano state date dai, dai poteri forti in Italia nei confronti dei ragazzi disoccupati. La situazione non può essere più muddled. Su un lato c'è il careless management di EU funds, e su un altro, più di uno in tre giovani italiani sono unemployed. Yet reforms that could improve those circumstances for the younger generation seem beyond reach. We travel on to Portugal, whose government, unlike Italy's, responded to the crisis by taking drastic measures. A resolute reform policy allowed the country to return to the financial market, but it also set in motion a social crisis. Today, 2.8 million Portuguese live in poverty or at risk of poverty more than a quarter of the population. One of the causes, precarious working conditions. In many of the cases, the own casal was unemployed and we assisted a new economic situation for these families, who until then had the possibility to provide their children at the level of alimentation, of clothes, of education, all the conditions, and from one moment to the other, they verified that they didn't have conditions to pay their house. Portugal has been in a tailspin for years. Pressed by international competition, Portugal's lack of growth led to continuous increases in state, company, and private debt. The lack of capital and a limited national financial market forced Portugal to take on extensive international debt. This financing model imploded in 2011. The country found itself at the brink of national bankruptcy. Entre 2011 e 2013, que foi quando a crise bateu mais forte em Portugal, foi o ano de 2013, vemos que houve uma queda do produto interno bruto português na ordem dos 7%, de quase 7%, o que é uma coisa gigantesca não é? e tem reflexos uh, muito profundos nas condições de vida das pessoas, no, no, no desemprego, no rendimento disponível que têm, uh, e, enfim, tem implicações também. Portugal had to ask for assistance from the Troika of the EU Commission, European Central Bank, and the International Monetary Fund. Emergency credits amounting to almost 80 billion euros were promised. This assistance was bound to strict conditions. The Portuguese did everything to meet them, right down to the very last one. They curtailed public spending, raised taxes, privatized state enterprises, but above all, they lowered labor costs. O programa de ajustamento deixou um rastro de, de, de destruição, de aumento de pobreza, de aumento da privação material das famílias, de aumento do, do desemprego. De, 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 quer dizer, as pessoas deixaram de, de ter futuro. For many in the workforce, living conditions deteriorated considerably. They lost their jobs and could no longer keep up with their debts. The middle class was most affected. 
In southern Portugal, we meet with the Grada family. Paulo had a successful construction firm, and his wife Patricia also worked for the company. But as the crisis got worse, the large construction firms went bankrupt, and Paulo's company was dependent on their contracts. A empresa era ligada à construção. A construção parou. E nós ficámos sem trabalho. E durante dois anos, pelo menos, um, o meu marido não recebeu ordenado para poder pagar ao pessoal. Eu também recebia pouco, porque a empresa tinha que ter dinheiro para pagar as despesas. E nós vivemos de poupanças que tínhamos feito durante os 15 anos que eu estive lá. Vivemos das poupanças, vivemos de ajuda da avó dele. E fomos fazendo a nossa vida normal. In the summer of 2015, the Gradas were forced to admit defeat. They were broke and had to shut down. Paula experienced this as a personal failure from which he has yet to recover. He does not even want to talk to us about it. Eu e o, e o meu marido fizemos aniversário de casamento e, e nós pensámos, epá, não dá para ir jantar fora, fazer um jantar como costumávamos fazer, não dá para ir celebrar. E, e nesse momento eu apercebi-me, não era assim, no Natal dávamos sempre prendas e deixámos de dar, era só para, para as crianças. O, a, a primeira imagem que me aparece é não tenho dinheiro. E foi um choque. Foi um choque grande. The Grada family built their house before the crisis, but it isn't paid off yet. And the installments leave them trembling every month. When they burn firewood, it's not for ambiance, but to keep the house warm. The family cannot afford any other kind of fuel. From the outside, the house seems in good shape. What the neighbors don't see is the black mold that is spreading across the ceilings and walls. The fireplace in the living room is not sufficient to eliminate the dampness. The family's poverty is visible only when you take a closer look. Vamos construindo a nossa própria máscara, não é? Nós construímos um, uma ideia de nós para a sociedade. Não, nenhum deles sabe que eu estive desempregada, por exemplo, uh, foi coisa que eu nunca falei com ninguém. Há uma, por acaso há uma, uma das mães que sabe porque é com quem eu lido mais. Going to the movies and other activities became unaffordable a long time ago. The Grada family spends its free time on the sports field. Son Alejandro is a passionate soccer player, and it doesn't cost anything. Many Portuguese families are in the same boat as the Garadas. They belong to a middle class that the crisis has wiped out. These people can no longer afford their old lifestyle. Many of them depend on public assistance. Existem muitos programas públicos de apoio às pessoas mais carenciadas, mas obviamente o melhor apoio é as pessoas terem a possibilidade de ter um emprego e terem e terem a possibilidade de resolver as suas necessidades através do seu trabalho. For those who cannot afford a hot meal, Portugal has the so-called social canteens. Government and community organizations run more than 800 of these facilities. Every day they provide a free lunch. For many of those who come, it is important that others cannot see they are in need. In Lule, 80 hot meals are carried home every day in shopping bags, hidden from prying eyes. Nós sabemos que existe uma pobreza envergonhada, escondida, precisamente pelo orgulho das pessoas, pelo porque pensam que perdem a sua dignidade por recorrer um, à loja social, por, por recorrer aos apoios sociais que nós podemos disponibilizar. E depois vivem as dificuldades, porque existe uma pobreza escondida. Precisamente por isso, porque as pessoas pensam que lutaram, trabalhar uma vida toda e de um momento para o outro, porque um membro fica sem, sem trabalho, pode acontecer a qualquer pessoa, e vê-se uma situação complicadíssima. Even though many still don't know how to pay for their food, 
On paper, the crisis is almost overcome. In fact, macroeconomic statistics do suggest that the foundering economy is recovering. In 2016, Portugal achieved a budgetary deficit of 2.1%, thus for the first time meeting the requirements of the EU. This is the best performance Portugal has had in its 42 years of democracy. Nós, neste momento, Portugal começa a ter um, um crescimento económico uh, que não se pode dizer que seja muito elevado, mas é significativo quando comparado com, com o que está a acontecer nos restantes países europeus. Uh, a taxa de desemprego tem vindo a diminuir, sendo que a população empregada também tem vindo a aumentar. But where are the jobs coming from? How well is labor being paid? How the workers' rights have been crippled to create incentives in the labor market. Portugal também é um dos países que, quando ao nível da União Europeia, apresenta níveis de precariedade laboral, precariedade contratual mais elevados. You see that uh, some people have a contract, or well off, let me say, but others have new contracts or uh, not of the same quality as the ones in the past, and this creates uncertainty if you have only a part-time contract while you need a full-time or one you want to work full-time, it's not really lifting you out of poverty. The Gradas submitted countless applications for the widest range of jobs, without success. Patricia even applied for a job as a supermarket cashier. When I went to the interview, um, o entrevistador dizia-me sempre assim, não, eu não lhe vou dar este trabalho. Você tem, as, tem demasiada formação para trabalhar aqui. E eu dizia-lhe, mas... E eu cheguei a dizer isto em entrevistas, mas isso não me interessa nada, porque eu não como o meu currículo. Eu preciso de dinheiro para comer. Não, não, mas nós não lhe vamos dar esta... Há outras pessoas que fazem este trabalho porque têm menos, menos habilitações. Finally, Patricia was offered the chance to work as a real estate agent. Antes da crise, eu e o Paulo recebíamos por mês cada um mil euros à volta disso. Era tínhamos um rendimento de dois mil euros em casa. Agora, como eu trabalho à comissão e ele depende dos trabalhos que tenha, há meses que entram 500 euros. Há outros meses que entram 200. Patricia works six days a week, often until 10 p.m. She has no fixed base salary. In order to acquire more clients, she is on call round the clock in hopes of making a sale and earning a commission. She also gives private lessons on the side, and her husband Paolo sometimes gets temporary jobs. It is a precarious situation. Hundreds of thousands of Portuguese left their country in the past few years because they were paid so badly they couldn't live on their income, if they had a job at all. The Grada family considered leaving Portugal as well, but they stayed because of the children. Now Patricia sells the houses of those who left. É para fugir à precariedade de muitos empregos que as pessoas vão à procura de soluções mais interessantes. Do ponto de vista do conjunto do país, da comunidade, se isso acontece com uma escala grande, ou muito, deixa de ser uma solução, passa a ser um problema. Porque uh, o país investiu muito nessa geração. Portugal needs skilled young people to solve its economic problem. But the poor and the old are the ones left behind. And as the population ages, the government will be confronted with even greater social expenditures. Even though the economy is on the rise again, public debt has reached a level of 130% of the GDP. The allowed limit in the EU is 60%. A dívida portuguesa, é, quer dizer, no médio, no médio prazo é, é insustentável. Quer dizer, Portugal gasta mais 
em serviço da dívida, porque lá gasta mais. A pagar juros da dívida, não é o dinheiro que é emprestou, mas juros da dívida, paga mais do que praticamente gasta com o seu Sistema Nacional de Saúde. Isto é uma coisa que é impossível, quer dizer, num país democrático isso é impossível. A situação é precária. Portugal tem de gastar 4,3% do seu GDP para servir a sua dívida. É graças ao Banco Europeu Central que as taxas de juros não são mais altas. It has pumped billions into countries in crisis by purchasing worthless sovereign debt. Otherwise, Portugal would have to dig even deeper into its pockets to pay its debt. But what other solution is there? Anyone who demands debt relief should understand that Portugal was suffering from chronically weak growth even before the crisis hit. The southern coast and Lisbon are the only regions doing relatively well. Most of the jobs in the coastal region relate to tourism. Just like this amusement park, tourism is a seasonal business. From November to April, there's no money. That's why many jobs here in Faro are precarious. The economy lacks exportable products. Globalization has increased competition especially for one of Portugal's major export sectors, textiles. Other countries have long been producing at lower cost. Die Globalisierung ist etwas, was wir nicht wegkriegen werden. Das ist eine Sache, mit der man sich einfach befassen muss. Die Konkurrenz ist nicht eine nur zwischen Unternehmen, sondern es gibt eine Konkurrenz zwischen Arbeitnehmerschaften, ganzer Betriebe, um nicht zu sagen, between the population of the country. But the EU is stepping in. To make Portugal more competitive, it has been funding the reform program Portugal 2020 since 2014, with investment subsidies amounting to 25 billion euros. And so far, the results appear to be positive. Claro que Portugal tem usado os fundos estruturais e tem usado muitas vezes com Nem sempre bem, é impossível garantir que 100%, mas quem olhar, quem visitar Portugal e olhar para o nosso país vê que nós fizemos investimentos nas escolas, nas vias de comunicação, modernizamos o país. É isso suficiente? Não. Vitor Guerreiro sees it the same way. Infrastructure projects should also bring jobs to the region, he says. He is mayor of the small city of São Brás, in the south of Portugal. In todas as obras que a autarquia faz, investimentos tenta que fazemos, tentamos sempre procurar as empresas locais para que seja mais uma forma de contribuirmos para a dinâmica económica do nosso conselho. Nós sabemos perfeitamente que cada posto de trabalho que é criado acaba por ser menos um apoio social que é necessário dar, porque as pessoas estão a ganhar o seu salário e estão a dar o seu contributo à comunidade. The renovation of the old city is being funded in two-thirds by EU funds. Local construction firms won the EU-wide tenders through dumping prices. Even though no jobs were created, existing ones were at least preserved. The new left-wing coalition led by the Socialists, in power since the winter of 2015, decided to reverse the decision made during the crisis to decrease the cost of labor. They want to stimulate consumption by increasing the minimum wage and lowering the value-added tax. Additional tax cuts are intended to attract investors. We have a political platform que não concorda com esse entendimento da realidade e o que quer é, por exemplo, em vez de adotar uma política de vamos reduzir os salários para se aumentar a nossa competitividade, pensa, bem, vamos se calhar tentar aumentar as qualificações da nossa população para assim ganharmos aí sim a competitividade. Is this the right decision? Or will it slow down the recent upturn? Is it possible to stimulate growth through tax reduction? meaning increasing the public deficit on one side and higher wages on the other? Is Portugal's workforce competitive enough on an international scale? Portugal is still 
um país muito dual. É verdade que a nova geração, a geração que tem menos de 35 anos, tem níveis de qualificação idênticos a muitos outros países da Europa. Mas a geração com mais de 50 tem os níveis mais baixos de qualificação de toda a Europa. What will Portugal's future look like? The government is counting on help from the EU. Porque se a economia europeia crescer mais, a economia portuguesa também o fará. Relying solely on the EU today seems like a risky move, especially for those who did not benefit from the mini upturn and continue to be precariously employed, if at all. And as long as Portugal depends on the EU, the crisis is not over. By contrast, Ireland is the poster child of the European rescue, and every statistic indicates progress. Ireland of all places. For centuries, the nation was Europe's poorhouse. From the Great Famine in the mid-19th century to the waves of immigration in the 1950s and 60s, Ireland was synonymous with misery and mass unemployment. Ja, in Irland gab es schon immer Armut und es sind schon immer Iren ausgewandert, weil sie woanders äh, eher eine Chance sahen, ihre Existenz äh, aufbauen oder fristen zu können als im eigenen Land. In the 1990s, Ireland experienced a boom. The economy grew rapidly and the unemployment rate fell. This expansion was fueled by billions in EU subsidies that flowed into the country. So in den, in den 80er, 90er Jahren äh, haben die das Geld der EU genommen und haben es in den Bildungssektor gesteckt. Und zwar nicht in den höchsten Bildungssektor, sondern in den mittleren. Also das, was wir heute Meister oder Techniker nennen würden oder maximal Fachhochschulingenieure. Und, und damit hat Irland eine Menge Arbeitsplätze an Land gezogen. Und dazu kam natürlich äh, eine sehr neoliberale äh, Politik, was den Finanzplatz Dublin angeht, äh, niedrige Steuersätze, mit denen sie auch teilweise Unternehmen aus Europa weggelobt, äh, weg, weggelockt haben. Add to that the low interest rates that came with the introduction of the euro, and Ireland had itself a boom. Unfortunately, the boom also led to a real estate bubble. Some British and overseas banks came here and they were very keen to lend money to Irish people to buy houses and uh, the Irish banks were doing that as well and over time property prices started to increase and people believed that the economy was very strong and that property would, would, would continue to increase in value. When the financial crisis struck in 2008, real estate prices collapsed. The banks fell into financial distress and had to be rescued, which cost the government billions. Ireland stood at the brink of bankruptcy and needed an EU bailout in 2010. Only thanks to loans from the Troika, amounting to 67 and a half billion euros, was the government able to finance its budget. In return, the country had to implement a severe austerity program. When the recession came, of course, everything changed. Uh, unemployment went up to 15% uh, from about 5%. Uh, number of people in poverty increased. Uh, social welfare payments were cut. Many, many other services were, were, were cut. And indeed, for poor people, their quality of life depends not only on the welfare payments they get, but on the services that are available to them. And many of those services were, were cut uh, or simply abolished. Three years later, in 2013, the Irish were able to exit the rescue program. Ireland became attractive to lenders once again, and foreign firms invested heavily on the island. Exports rose and the number of unemployed fell. Although the amount of debt was still huge, the Irish model was back in business. It's amazing how they, uh, they, they created jobs the last year. Uh, youth unemployment also is, uh, is far better than before, but what is still far too high in Ireland is the poverty level. More than one in six Irish citizens lives in poverty, including many children. 
Social housing construction stopped, leading to a total lack of affordable accommodation. As a result, a growing number of families are homeless. Sarah is one of them. I was doing fine. I had a job, I had a house, I had my children, everything was just very good, you know, going rosy. And then all of a sudden, boom, just changed like that, you know? So uh, not everybody ends up in situations like this, you know, because they're on drugs or alcohol or anything like this. It can happen to every, anybody, like anybody. First, Sarah lost her job, and then her house became uninhabitable when a pipe burst. Her landlord did not take care of it. Suddenly, she found herself pregnant and with three children out on the street. She placed her children with a foster home to save them from homelessness. Today, she lives in a woman's shelter with her baby. It's very hard. Emotionally, it's... There's not a single day that goes by that I don't think about it. There's times where I cry constantly, you know, and having one child with me and not having my other three, I feel so guilty. In 2016, the number of homeless people rose by 24%. Many families are affected as well. In Dublin, 2,700 children live in shelters. For me, there are five basic needs, five fundamental human rights, the right to adequate food, the right to education, the right to health care, the right to work, and the right to a home. And the group that are most in poverty are single parent families. So many of those single parent families are living in, on welfare. They cannot get a job and they cannot get back to education because our childcare costs are so high. Childcare in Ireland costs almost twice as much as the European average. Many parents don't work because they simply cannot afford to pay for childcare. And not working only aggravates the situation for both parents and children. One in three children is poor or lives at the risk of poverty. Also, ich glaube auch nicht, dass man wirklich speziell Kinderarmut adressieren kann. Was man tun kann, ist, dass, dass Kinder für eine Familie nicht zum Armutsrisiko werden. Das muss man sagen. Wenn wir ein so starkes gesellschaftliches Interesse daran haben, dass Kinder geboren werden, dann müssen wir es Familien auch ermöglichen, Kinder großzuziehen. Many of those young people who are growing up in homes that are poor will end up leaving school early. That will affect their employment possibilities for the rest of their lives. And so poverty simply transfers from one generation uh, to another generation. At last, the Irish government is stepping in. The federal budget for childcare was increased by 19 million so that a law can become effective as of September 2017. All parents with children of six months or older should get financial aid thus making childcare affordable, regardless of who is providing it. Even the political opposition supports the law. Whether it's the grandparent at home, whether it's the childminder, whether it's the stay-at-home mum, which is very important as well in the whole makeup of it, whether it's a community crash, be it public or private, as long as the intervention and the, the support mechanism is there, along with proper funding, it will work. It will work. Accessibility, sustainability and inclusion. That's the key message. The law would probably not have even passed without the EU's advocacy. We cannot decide and uh, just oblige member states to develop enough of that or of that. We have common tools, common objectives. We help them to develop things. But of course, in the end, it is in the member state that it has to be done. However, it will be years before the situation for children changes. And the worst may be yet to come. Do I see child, care, child poverty continuing into 2020? Absolutely. Do I see the healthcare systems throughout Europe or in Ireland here being sorted by 2020? Absolutely not. We have waiting lists. We have waiting lists. And child care poverty is only going up, not coming down. There is already a lost generation in Europe. Working poor and unemployed young people in countries like Portugal and Italy, who suffered the downturn during the financial crisis, are most affected. Now, child poverty threatens to leave yet another generation by the wayside. Can we talk about a success of Europe 2020? There is no simple answer to this question. 
What is crucial is that there be a Europe-wide effort to combat poverty. Europe must recognize it will be judged by the numbers of its poor citizens. If it simply resigns itself to perpetual poverty, the European ideal will be jeopardized. Armen neigen seltener dazu, politisch zu partizipieren. Sie gehen seltener zur Wahl, sie gehen auf keinen Fall auf Demonstrationen. Und ähm, das hat natürlich Auswirkungen. Das ähm, können natürlich dann radikale Parteien nutzen, Neueinsteiger ins politische System und äh, diese Wählerschaft äh, aufgreifen. How can the EU keep legitimizing itself when so many of its citizens feel their situation is constantly declining? With people's worsening economic situation, their faith in politics is crumbling. Add to that a real image problem. What I see too often, uh, and sorry dear ministers if you're listening to me, but I see too often that national ministers come out and only tell a national story. We won. It's in our interest that no, we have to look at the common interest. Die Gefahr ist groß, dass Europa auseinander, äh, auseinanderbricht, weil man auch sagen muss, dass eine Menge nationaler Politiker äh, mit Europa Schindluder treiben und eigentlich nur Belastungen für Europa anzubieten haben. Und in der Abwandlung des Kennedy-Satzes frag nicht, was Europa für dich tun kann oder für dein Land tun kann, sondern frag mal, was du mit deinem Land für Europa tun kannst. Das fragen sehr wenige. Yet that is exactly what Europe needs for the social and economic union to succeed.